in New Brunswick and all of Atlantic Canada, you see a real infrastructure around uh, the cannabis industry and innovating in the cannabis industry specifically. So the next panel that I'm going to welcome up, look how, and look how organized the people from New Brunswick are. This is really something. Um, so so uh, I'm going to welcome them up and they'll introduce themselves. But um, so this is really about um, creating a hub for cannabis innovation, as if on cue. Uh, so I'd like to welcome up Sarah Tahor, who's going to be uh, moderating the panel from Can Innovation, Steve Milbury from Opportunities New Brunswick, Pauline Roy from Université de Moncton, Hart Devitt from uh, University of New Brunswick, and Danielle Connell, my new best friend from uh, MyTax. All right. Hi, everybody. <laughs> Who has been to New Brunswick? OK, so a few, a few. Who knew that New Brunswick was creating a cannabis innovation hub? Guys, panelists? <laughs> so apparently they are, um, <laughs> which was exciting to find out. Uh, especially, I'll just briefly introduce myself. So my name is Sarah. I run um, a cannabis innovation hub primarily for Israeli technologies, which is why I'm really excited to be moderating this panel and hearing how um, here in Canada we're also doing our own uh, version of an innovation hub. And it's great to see that a province like New Brunswick is really the leader in this. So before we get too far into it, I'd love for each of the panelists to please introduce themselves. So, Danielle? Mm -hmm. So maybe we'll start with Steve then? Or? Testing. Oh, yeah. perfect. Danielle Connell from uh, University of New Brunswick, and I represent MyTax at UNB. So uh, part of the cannabis team in the province, and MyTax is a national funding agency, so we fund uh, graduate student placements within industry. Hart? I'm Hart Devitt. I'm the Director of Industry and Government Services at the University of New Brunswick. <clears throat> and uh, our group um, does outreach to industry. Um, we also um, manage all of the intellectual property that is developed on the campus. And uh, it's our job to, uh, to push it out into, into industry and try to, try to make that uh, commercially successful. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Bonjour. Alors, uh, Pauline Roy. I'm with the uh, University of Moncton, so the University of Moncton, and I'm the Innovation Liaison Officer, uh, with about the same sort of mandate as, as Hart just, just described, working with industry and with our researchers to uh, advance applied research. Thank you. And my name is Steve Milbury. I am with the government of New Brunswick. I've been responsible for the last five years with creating the economic development strategy for cannabis, more specifically in the beginning around medical cannabis, and very happy to be here today. Great, fantastic. So Pauline, why don't we start with you. Uh, University of Moncton is doing a lot of research on the plant science side. Um, so why don't you talk to us a little bit about some of the more specific innovation projects that you're really excited about that you see going on in the university? OK, thank you. And um, I've taken a few notes because I'm not the scientist, and so uh, I want to make sure I get the terminology correct. Um, so we have a Cannabis uh, Innovation Research Center at uh, l'Université de Moncton, and that's really at the heart of the research that's uh, going on right now um, uh, on our campus. Um, about a year ago, we received funding through Genome Canada and other funders, including the Atlantic uh, Canada Opportunities Agency, um, and the provincial government, and uh, also uh, to create a project with one of our LPs uh, in New Brunswick uh, Organogram. And this uh, multi-year funding has really helped us uh, get going with some important research. Um, uh, some of the uh, elements they're looking at right now is microbial, uh, sorry, microbial uh, communities uh, getting established under commercial production settings and trying to identify particular bacteria uh, to boost, pro boost productivity and reduce uh, incidence of diseases. So uh, the microbial is what you find in, in, in the dirt uh, where, uh, in the uh, LPs when they're growing their uh, cannabis plants. Another uh, project is uh, generating genomic resources for various cannabis uh, strains. Uh, so this will help um, to understand the gene genetic uh, strains of particular uh, traits, such as the production of cannabinoids and terpenes, 
and also ID uh, genes that are important for uh, resistance to disease and uh, flowering times. Uh, the genomic uh, understanding can help accelerate the development of uh, novel cannabo cannabinoid strains, either through uh, marker-assisted breeding or the use of biotechnologies such as uh, genome editing. Fantastic, really interesting. Um, Danielle, MyTax is a national organization um, that you guys work with students from all over, um, but you specifically work really closely with New Brunswick. What are some lessons that you think the rest of Canada can learn from New Brunswick? Because you guys are clearly doing something right with some of the highest consumption rates in the country. So obviously you guys are growing good product. How, wh what else can Canada learn from? Uh, Talk to one another. <laughs> work together. It's fun. Uh, it's amazing what you can accomplish when you have all the players at the same table. It takes money to make this stuff happen, and if you have all the right people, you can draw the map to the money at the table in one conversation. So it's bringing all the voices to the table, building interdisciplinary cross-sectoral teams like we've done in New Brunswick, government, academia, industry, and community. So New Brunswick is a small province, and it's, it's actually true, we kind of do all know one another, <laughs> even before legalization. So it was very natural to us to work together as a community and attack this as a community. So, so there's a lot of collaboration needed in government, in academia and industry, and we need to talk to communities. So it's being open to those, to working outside your comfort zone. And that's hard, but it's worth it. Great. Um, Hart, so at the research end is obviously very important, especially from universities. That's what the expectation is. But a lot of times there comes challenges when you try to fill in the D part of R&D, which is the development and the commercialization. What are some either challenges or recommendations that you have um, on successes to take the research and bring it into more pl practical applications that can be commercialized? Well, I think that um, in this industry in particular, we're, we've seen uh, one of the fastest growing industries um, from our perspective that we've ever seen. It's the fastest growing industry we've ever worked with. And a couple of years ago, we were really quite naive when it came to uh, the cannabis industry. I think academia in general looked at this and said, oh, here's a cashed up industry that's in desperate need of research. And we thought this is a perfect opportunity to partner with us as, uh, as researchers. Um, as it turns out, um, one of the challenges we've found is that uh, the, the, although the, a lot of cannabis industries are, are certainly um, uh, highly, uh, they've got a lot of uh, investment in them, they're not cashed up, There's not, and the cash that they do have, they're concentrating on growing more and faster. So this is, this is something, and we understand this, this is, this is what has to be done by the industry, but from our perspective, What's missing is, is that basic research component. So we see an industry that is running headlong towards a brick wall. And um, you know, so as we all know, the, the science um, behind this industry is lagging by years, many, many years. So we see an, a, an industry that's, that's going out there. It's, the technology is, is incredible. We've seen that today. Um, we've seen how quickly uh, companies grow. But uh, I think that in the, in the next little while, um, uh, we aren't seeing the kind of uh, investment in the, the basic science, the basic uh, research that's going to be needed um, in the future. And when I say future, Jay re referred to the future a little while ago as three, six, 12 months. That's not future when it comes to uh, uh, the basic research. So uh, if the industry does hit the wall in two or three years and they turn around and say, oh my God, we're, we're in desperate need of research, well, um, it, we can't supply research uh, in the space of three, six, or 12 months. So uh, I think investment now um, from industry uh, in uh, the basic academic research, and whether it's in botany or, uh, or, or uh, chemistry or, uh, or even data, um, big data analytics, which we also have uh, a lot of expertise in, I think that's, what's, that's been the real challenge lately. Interesting. Um Steve, one thing that is very dear to my heart is that I was quite surprised and excited to see that the ONB and the University of New, of New Brunswick have partnered together with uh, the Hebrew University out in uh, Jerusalem in Israel. So that was quite interesting. We don't see very many of these 
international research partnerships. Um, can you tell us a little bit about this, about that relationship, where it started, and where you expect it to be going? Sure. So it was four years ago when we were tasked with coming up with an economic development strategy on medical cannabis, and we really wanted to uh, hit them with the hind and, and really get it out there and not be like the Richards, the Sal's, and the Howards out there just doing the same old thing. So we took this approach where we were going to go out there and be different. And when we started pulling everyone together, uh, they were telling us that from a healthcare standpoint, they were very, uh, they, they didn't like it, they didn't, they didn't want to talk about cannabis, they were scared about it. So then we started posi positioning it so that, so how can we be the best at this? So, so how are we going to lead? How are we as a small province going to make an impact on a global scale or even on a national scale? So we spent a lot of time working really hard with all of our partners that are obviously sitting here and also a number of other partners within government at the federal level and provincial level trying to understand this. So as we started laying out the strategy, there's, there's some real strong components that, that need to be in play for that. And, and when we started looking around, uh, we recognized quickly that there's other things being done around the world and Israel is a leader in this. And they have been doing a lot of work for 25, 30 years and it was at that time when we uh, attended uh, a conference in Israel, uh, had the opportunity to meet with Dr. Bashulam and then some of his team, and then uh, followed up again a year later where we sat down with them and said, okay, what can we do to accelerate the good work that we're capable of doing in Canada and specifically with UMB? And, and why reinvent the wheel? Like why, why would we try and do things all over again were the thoughts going through my head? So the, the relationship although we're still working on that relationship. It's in its infancy stage, so we're still working towards what that's going to look like. But nonetheless, we are heading down a path where we're going to work with them through our partners with MyTax, also with our partners at UMB and UDEM and, and, and others to hopefully accelerate the work that we want to do here in Canada so that we can get, and I've heard a lot of conversations today around the medical side, which makes me incredibly happy because when, and I also heard another conversation earlier about us not being the farmers uh, of cannabis 10, 15 years down the road. That, our plan is about looking at the future and, and I see uh, relationships like we have in Israel uh, as being part of that future. So that's where that came from. I can add to that. We're, we're thinking really strategically in that there's people like me on this team because my tax is the tool to connect New Brunswick to Israel because my tax can fund graduate student exchanges with countries abroad. So we can send New Brunswick students to study in Israel, and we can bring Israeli students to study in New Brunswick, and my tax helps cover that. So it's a knowledge exchange. We're furthering our research uh, advancements on both sides. Everybody wins, and it creates new employment opportunities for graduate students, and it brings research into business. And it's not just it's not just Israel. I, I, you know, lately over the past year or so, we've uh, developed some really strong ties with uh, with the Netherlands. So uh, again, maybe Danielle, you can talk a little bit more about the the, the Netherlands thing because that's that's your gig. We love the Netherlands. <laughs> so we went there. Uh, we're going there for our third trip in in a month. So we have gone to the Netherlands as a cross sectoral team with no agenda. Uh, we visited a lot of cities and universities and companies yep. and government. We went to the Office of Medicinal Cannabis uh, and we made a lot of friends and we learned a lot. So they liked our open approach and we liked the way they, they operate. They're very to the point. Uh, so we have had exchanges. They've since come to see us twice and we're now forming sister organizations. So in New Brunswick, we're going to have a coalition, coalition of the willing, and it's government, academia, and industry. And in the Netherlands, they're doing the same thing. And the point is to create a global network of knowledge and research exchange, and it's industry-driven. So it's, it's framed within the universities, it's supported by government, it's enabled through provincial and fund federal money as well as industry investment. So this Dutch New Brunswick exchange is really exciting. So stay tuned, we are the Atlantic Cannabis Coalition. 
Very interesting, very exciting. I am waiting on, uh, what's it called, tooth and nails. <laughs> Is that what you said? Don't give it. So speaking about the challenges in globalization is a lot of it also has to do with different standards. So for example, even hemp is defined one thing in, in Canada, uh, one thing in the US, one thing in Europe, one thing in everybody has their own regulations. But one area where you start to see more standardization is when we shift from medical cannabis more into the area of pharmaceutical cannabis and RX products. Um, and in Israel, they're doing quite a bit of clinical research on specific indications uh, and delivery methods. And from my experience, we're not seeing as much of this in Canada, although UNB is, is an exception where they're starting to take some uh, action in the clinical research area as well. And so, Hart, can you talk to us a little bit about that? And well, I, I don't think that, uh, I think you're right in that Canada as a whole, we aren't doing the kind of clinical uh, trial research that is already being done in Israel. And, and uh, so we've addressed the challenges as best we can. We're a small comprehensive university. Um, we don't have a med school, um, but we're co-located with Dalhousie, med, Dalhousie Medicine. So, um, and the same goes for UDM. UDM is co-located with uh, the medical school at Sherbrooke. So um, again, even, even though we don't have the resources immediately, um, because of our collaborations with, with other groups, um, and our close ties to Horizon he sorry, the Horizon Health Network and Vitalité, um, which is the, the French version, we, we can uh, create the, um, the environment in which clinical trials can happen. We've got some small clinical trials started, but I think um, when it comes to uh, appealing to uh, sponsors of clinical trials, I think coming to New Brunswick is, uh, is very appealing because we are a small population, but unfortunately, we are the oldest population in the, uh, provincially we're the oldest population and we are amongst the least healthy. We have more chronic disease, we have more heart disease, we have more uh, incidences of certain types of cancer than anywhere else in, in the country. We also have a population that's incredibly static. We don't go anywhere, we don't move, you know, we stay where we are. All of which is kind of sad as a New Brunswicker, but... Um, yeah, and, come and, move to New Brunswick. So, <laughs> but yeah, in, terms of, clinic, in terms of clinical trials, <laughs> yeah, it's great we, for are, research. we are very appealing to, uh, to have clinical trials on a number of different fronts. So there are lots of different clinical trials going on because of the things I've just said. And so um, we, are, we are definitely uh, on the radar for sponsors of clinical trials in cannabis. And a nice connection with Israel as well, our focus on PTSD, we have the same interest. Uh, in New Brunswick, we have Canadian Forces Base Gagetown, which is the largest Canadian Forces Base in Canada, possibly in the Commonwealth. So we've got a huge military population and we have a massive PTSD problem. So we've got, we've got a great population that we can use for clinical trial studies that complement and, and contrast with things going on. So that's another area that we can learn from one another. Great, um, so we've talked a lot about partnerships within um, the university and within the international partners. What about partnerships with business like the LPs? Uh, so maybe Pauline, can you speak a little bit? You mentioned briefly about some of the uh, relationships that you already have, but if you can dive into that a little bit deeper um, and maybe share some insights for other groups, whether they're universities or other organizations that are trying to partner with LPs. Sure, absolutely. I'd, I'd say that uh, generally it, it's working out very well. Uh, the partners, industrial partners that have approached us and we're working with uh, recognize the value of the research and, and understand the context like uh, uh, Hart was alluding to that research doesn't happen overnight. Uh, we need to take the time to, to do everything properly and get the appropriate results. Uh, but they've been generally uh, very uh, accommodating and, and open to that. Um, but our scientists uh, have been trying to establish a nationwide, a nationwide uh, survey of pests and disease um, in the, uh, that are affecting cannabis plants uh, across Canada. And uh, there's been some LPs that are very open to that to be able to send in their samples and uh, you know, their guaranteed um, anonymity and to be able to track where, where pests and disease are affecting plants uh, throughout and in which province and so on. So from a scientific perspective, this is very interesting, it's very important, uh, but sometimes our scientists don't understand that from a business point of view, there's some reluctance of, you know, no, I don't want anybody to know that I've got an issue with my, uh, you know, with my crops or with my, my uh, plants. And so there's, there's you know, been a, we've been a, 
uh, obligated to give some reassurance and to really set up uh, systems where it's like, okay, we can help you address some of your issues, but it will never be something that you have to deal with, you know, as a, as a scandal, for example. So there's, um, I think that those are some of the issues sometimes that we find when we're work industry, whether it's cannabis or, or other, uh, other industries. There's always the scientific mind that wants to know more and share everything because you get so much further when you share everything. And then the, the business side where it's like, no, no, we want the IP, we want the secrets, we want exclusivity and, and so on. So that's part of the relationship building that you need to be able to do when uh, you're working and, with and industry. I, I think it's easier to do in smaller universities to manage manage the intellectual property, to manage the, the researchers on an individual basis um, because we have fewer researchers we, and, and we know them. Like we've, we know all our researchers, we know them well. We know exactly what their strengths are. So um, like, like Pauline said, we can, we can manage these relationships um, uh, quite closely so that things go smoothly, so that um, it, it's a really smooth, um, process for industry to approach either one of our universities or, or indeed um, New Brunswick and, and get what they want. In fact, uh, I was going to mention, I, I believe we are the first uh, province in Canada to have a provincial cannabis coordinator. So uh, as of about four weeks ago, one of my team was uh, seconded to the province as the provincial cannabis coordinator. So his role is to, is to uh, make sure that uh, the coordination between government, industry, and academia goes smoothly. He is, in fact, a one-stop shop for industry that's interested in working anywhere in New Brunswick, um, and, and he can answer those questions, make the introductions, and, and again, make it very uh, a very smooth transition for uh, an LP or, indeed, any cannabis company to come to our province. I also wanted to add, you know, the subject of our panel, this innovation hub in, in New Brunswick, and I, we really need to mention the that uh, the provincial government, uh, when it saw that you know, uh, uh, recreational cannabis was going to be legalized, really got behind it. So we really uh, you know, have to express our gratitude to uh, ONB and uh, provincially there's the bio ONB uh, organization that have really um, played a role in coordinating us because uh, acad academics sometimes don't get very well coordinated. So I think it's important to mention that that's Props been a, to Steve. Uh, <laughs> yeah, an important role in, in what's happened in New Brunswick, and they continue to help us in, uh, in that uh, sector. Great. Well, thank you so much to the panelists. Hopefully now next time at the next year tech and innovation event when we say who's been to New Brunswick and Atlantic Canada, everyone's going to raise their hand and cheers. So thank you, guys. Thank you.